Hey guys, how's it going? Solo back with another stock market video and what another rough day in the market. Seems like the market just playing with our emotions. It's just big red after big red after big red. Then we'll have a green day and we'll say, hey, the dip is over. Did you buy the dip? We're back going to the moon. And then it's just more days of red. I mean, look at this again, you know, same story, different day. Big red tech. Amazon, Tesla, Tesla down another 7%. Google, Facebook, the entire semis, again, just getting beaten down. AMD down over 5%. Look at this. AMD is $78. There was a time not too long ago where AMD was just hovering in the 90s, and we were talking about when AMD was going to be $100 a share. Qualcomm been mooning for months and months. Qualcomm being beaten down as well. NVIDIA, Micron down also 5%. The Honey Badger. But Adobe, Microsoft, Apple, the banks, right? Visa, not the banks, I should say. The financials, Visa, MasterCard, PayPal, also in the red. Banks are actually looking pretty good. JP Morgan, Bank of America, PNC Bank. I mean, just a crazy, crazy day in the stock market. But overall, way more red than there is green on the board. But again, looks like the big tech stocks are leading the downturn. And I'm going to prove that. We're going to talk about Palantir in this video, but I think it's important to look at the overall market because I think no matter what stock you're playing, chances are, even if it's a good stock, maybe a work from home stock or a reopening stock, it may still be getting beaten down just by the overall market getting sold off. So let's take a look at the cubes, QQQ. So this is the NASDAQ 100 ETF. And as you can see, down 3.1% today. That is a big move for the Qs. They don't usually move that much. So again, NASDAQ 100 is basically big tech. So when the Qs are down, it usually means that big tech is getting hit pretty hard. And like I said today, down over 3%. On the week, they're also down about 0.6%. Kind of, like I said, playing with our emotions. Kind of had a rally the past couple of days. A little bit of a melt off. Big green day. And then, nope, that was just a fake out to... And then we had, again, that sell-off today. We're going to have an interesting Friday, let me tell you that, because not only is it the last day of the trading week, but also it's quad witching, which means a lot of options expire tomorrow. Stocks, index funds, you name it, that's what's called quad witching. So we might have a lot of volume typically on quad witching days in general, but it usually, in theory, means that there's going to be a lot of volatility. So I think my prediction is tomorrow in the market overall, it's either going to be big green or big red. I don't think it's going to be a boring flat day. On the month, the Qs, NASDAQ 100, still in the red, down 6.4% on the month. Over three months, though, you're still in the green, but just barely. Look at that, 0.13%. If you're still bullish mid to long term on the stock market or on the NASDAQ, the Qs, this may be the dip opportunity for you to buy. Not financial advice. Again, always do your own research and your own due diligence. But big tech has certainly gone on sale the past month or so. Now, the overall market, really the S&P 500 here, SPY, also not a good day today, down 1.5% today. Everything was kind of going pretty good until about 2 p.m. That's kind of when the melt-off started happening across the market. On the week, SPY also down, but just barely 0.06% down. On the month, though, still down, again, just barely down 0.05%. So pretty much a flat month and a flat week for SPY overall. For the past three months though, you're still looking good, but just barely up about 5.6% on SPY. Again, the whole market has just been selling off. So things are definitely on sale. Now, one thing I like to keep an eye on is the VIX or what they call the fear index. So UVXY is a ticker. That's actually the ProShares Ultra VIX short-term futures. Now, if you scroll out, this is what the VIX is going to look like, right? Because remember a year ago, back when the Rona first popped off, the fear in the market was very high, right? So the VIX was very high. Look at it. It was $110.63 for this ETF, the UVXY. Now, obviously, as things kind of calm down in the market, it's going to start getting lower and lower. But take a look at this. Today, this pop, again, right at 2 p.m., UVXY was about $6.60. Right at 2 p.m. like clockwork when the rest of the market started flipping out, the fear index rose all the way, basically a dollar. I mean, we closed up 8.5% on the fear index for today. On the week, you can kind of see that trend. We were getting less and less fearful, maybe a little bit more fearful on March 17th. 
Then we said, nah, nothing to worry about. And then today, 2 p.m., ooh, we got really spooked. But this is one play that if you want to play the volatility in the market, you could look at VIX or something like an ETF like UVXY. I've played this in the past, but I don't typically play it. But it's out there if you want to play the volatility. But this is not something that's meant to be held for a short or midterm position. This is more for day trades, to be honest with you. But let's get right into the main course of the video and talk about Palantir. So Palantir, again, red day in the market, no surprise there, down almost 5%. But look at this, again, just like clockwork, something happened at 2 p.m. Eastern time today or somebody said something. If you know what it is, leave a comment below because I couldn't find it. But like clockwork, it's like someone sent a memo out to the stock market and said, hey guys and girls, 2 p.m., time to dump it. And that's exactly what they did. Look at this. Penalty was in the red all day, but kind of flat. But 2 p.m. came and we just sold off hard. On the week, Palantir is not looking so great either. Down 6.9% on the week. On the month, down almost 15%. 14.4% on the month. Over three months, also in the red, down almost 8.8%. So not looking so good. Let's see what the options chain is looking like. If you want to sell some puts on Palantir, maybe catch a deal while it's on sale. Let's go out to next Friday, March 26th, since tomorrow is only the last day till expiration for this week. You would collect $100 at the money for putting up $2,350 in capital. That is going to give you a return on risk for just a little over a week of 4.3%. Not bad. Respectable. Not the most juiciest ticker out there right now. For the juice, you got to go to tickers like Marathon Digital and Riot Blockchain right now. Those crypto stocks are just going bananas. But like I said, respectable 4.3% in terms of juice factor for one week of options trading at the money. Some news actually broke on Palantir a week ago. Here's an article out of Benzinga. They struck another deal, another partnership, which is always bullish for Palantir because that's what they thrive on. So they partnered long term with a French automotive supplier, Forisia. And this article talks about that. So if you're not familiar with Forisia, they are actually an automotive company. It says they've entered a six-year strategic partnership with French automotive supplier Forisia. I'm not even sure if I'm pronouncing that correctly. To help the latter accelerate its digital transformation and move toward carbon neutrality. So they're going to use Palantir's foundry software to obtain better insights on data from manufacturing to purchasing and from engineering to finances. It's going to help their material consumption, improve R&D competitiveness, secure purchasing excellence, and track and measure overall CO2 neutrality efforts. I like this. Secure purchasing excellence. So vague and a lot of cool buzzwords there, but what exactly does that even mean? They're going to help them make good purchases, I guess. But right now, like I showed you on Robinhood, Palantir has been having a rough one to three months, like the overall market is, to be in fairness. But let's look at the trading view chart here on Palantir to do some updated TA. So the nice thing about Palantir is if I zoom in here, we drew this area of trend at just about $24. Looks like today we closed right on that area of support. Now we did break below it for a little bit back on March 5th and March 8th. In fact, we got intraday all the way down to about $20 a share. So we'll have to see if this area of support at 24 is going to hold tomorrow. Meaning, are we going to bounce off it and climb back up? The next area of trend or resistance I have is at about $25.00. And 50 or 60 cents. So, not too much more to go before, in my opinion, Palantir hits resistance. Or are we going to break down below this area of support? Because right now, if I zoom out, my next area of support is at about $21. That's all the way here from back in November and December of last year. And you can see we dipped below that, like I said, very shortly intraday on March 5th. Let's see if we're going to retest that low or if this was the bottom, this is the basement, and we're going to go back to the up and up. Now, the thing that's bearish right now is that Palantir is trading both below the 50-day moving average here, this pink line, and the 21-day moving average, which is this orange line. The RSI is a little bit towards the oversold side, but nothing crazy. The volume today really wasn't that high either. So really, I'm kind of torn, but overall, my sentiment is I think we're looking a little bit bearish on Palantir right now. Let's see how we close the week out. Again, this might all just depend on how the stock market does tomorrow. Because even if Palantir has a good day, it still might get dragged down by the overall market just taking a dump.
Let's end the video looking at the option flow data to see what the big money investors were doing with Palantir today. So here's Sweepcast, one of the programs I've been using for my option flow data. And overall, 27 calls came in today, 17 puts on Palantir. The overall sentiment according to this program is bullish. The biggest value option was for $2 million that came in just before the market closed at 3.38 p.m. And that is a put option. Now, this sentiment, this program believes that this was a bullish play, but we'll have to wait and see. I haven't kept track too much of the sentiment here to see how accurate it is. I'm paying more attention, honestly, to the puts and the calls. The fact that somebody's betting $2 million on puts for a very short expiration, I mean, this expires tomorrow, actually, March 19th. That is a very, very aggressive play. Someone is putting $2 million on a one DTE option, one data expiration. So maybe somebody knows something, especially because they bought it pretty much a few minutes before the market closed. And look at this, seven minutes before the market closed, the second biggest option was for a $355,000 strike, another put option, but this one is further out for June of this year. This one is for a $23 strike. The $2 million option was for a $40 strike, which is a little bit odd. Again, we'll have to wait and see what the market does with Palantir tomorrow. But let me know in the comments below, are you still bullish on Palantir? Do you have shares or options on Palantir? Hopefully we don't have too many bag holders right now on Palantir and let me know what your plans are. As always, join the Discord server if you're not in there already. Add me on Twitter, StockTwits, Instagram, and Reddit. I hope you're having a green week. Hope we end the week on a green note. Regardless, I'll see you on the moon.